From the start of my journey, I've been amazed and I've admired Apple's work. Surely not because I'm biased. The way they design and develop their website um, got me interested and thinking how they actually did it. Yesterday evening, I was brave enough to look up their secret uh, source code that led the way to their success. So uh, let's go to apple.com. If we scroll down and have a look at the Apple cart page, we see this dope scroll animation going on as we scroll down and up. It's a bit laggy, but when I'm not recording, this is pretty going pretty smooth. Now we're going to use a tool that uh, real hackers use to amaze their friends at school. It's called inspect element. Really what you do is you right click and you hit inspect element. Now we're in Chrome DevTools. This window here, that's the source code. This one is a CSS. If we click on an element, we see uh, the styling done in the style sheet. So let me just select this title here. This is basically the container. As you can see, they have these uh, custom attributes assigned to uh, this div, a lot of divs actually. This looks like an object that basically have all these animation properties in their HTML. My guess is that they use these in JavaScript to actually make the animation work. A big company like Apple has their own uh, design guidelines and framework and libraries. We aren't going to look into these because I already know how we can make the exact same effect uh, on her own. There was a, a post I shared a while ago on Instagram about a JavaScript library. Here it is. It's called basic scroll and libraries are actually meant to make our life easier. This one is no different. If you go to their website, you can actually see the effect right away. It's very laggy right now. See this animation here. This is a an example of how it actually works. So I recommend you to first go to their GitHub page. Their documentation is right here. So basically how it works is um, you create the scroll animation in JavaScript. You define uh, the elements from and to. This may be like a little bit confusing when you first see this, but as we go on, this will become more clear. Then there are some properties. These are CSS variables. This is uh, to rotate this cube. This is to uh, to move it from position A to B. If we look at the CSS, we can see that they use this variable for translate X and this one for rotating it. The possibilities are endless, which is pretty cool. I also made a code pen uh, a while ago about basic scroll. It was like a pretty long time ago. This is uh, just an example of what you can do with it. Ooh, fancy. It doesn't really look that good at this point. That's why we're here. After changing um, some stuff on that code pen, I ended up like this. So if we scroll down, you'll see this. This scroll animation and you see the background oh my god this is so laggy it's pretty smooth without recording a 4k display but it looks pretty damn good you can check it out this is the link so this is basically the code what i did is we have like a, a header a header and that's basically this exactly this and then we have a title container and then we have the title and this is the background image the header is is taking up the full width and height of the viewport. Then we have like the title container that's fixed. That's why this text isn't moving. This is basically to center it horizontally and vertically. And then we have our heading. You see that opacity and transform are being animated. This is a title fade out and this is a title scale down. Why these are two separate ones is because the scaling down starts at zero. And this is to margin top. And what is margin top? Well, in order for this to have the exact the right timing, for example, if I scroll down here, you'll see that at the, at the point that this text is hidden, you'll see that the other text right at the same moment comes comes into, into the viewport. And that's done basically because, first of all, I got the header height, that's this height. This is basically of the header. And this depends on how big your uh, window is at that moment. So uh, we have the margin top is this converted to a string because this is a number and then with pixels. Content is getting like a margin top from that margin top, it's gonna become all clear. Let's get this uh, background image. 
Okay, so this this should work. We gave the header a background color of red. So ev so this red uh, container is the header. If we scroll down, you'll see that there is this white box, but this is like the margin. And why we have this margin is because we need to wait for this to fade out. And at that point, um, the other text can come in. So let me just change everything I did here. So basically what's happening, you can't really see it, because it's transparent, when you usually scroll down on a page, it's it scrolls down, but it isn't the case here. It looks like it's standing still, but it actually is. So there is coming something on top of this at this point. And then right here, this is at the start of content. If you would give content a background color, it would be like starting from here and then going down, all the way down. So this is like the content box and between this content box, there is this margin when we scroll, um, we don't see it, but it is coming, it's coming up. It's the height of the header. So you're basically scrolling tr this whole proportion. And when that's done, kind of in the middle, content comes up. So this is like header and then between header, there is a margin and here starts content and this margin has the same height as the header, which makes that when we scroll down and the header is actually, this is like the bottom of the header and it's going to here, we have this margin here and then a content comes up. And we have also a start point. It's pretty simple actually. It's just a header height and then divided by two. What I use it for is to start the fade out of this. Because if you scroll down, you see that it doesn't start to fade out right away. It starts to fade out when you're literally in the middle of the header. And then from the middle to the bottom, it, it fades away. So that's like the same effect Apple uses there. And I think it looks pretty cool. Now, the cool thing is that this all works on mobile as well. There is one thing I need to say though, with Safari, you get this, you got this, uh, it's like a toolbar. And when you scroll down, it basically disappears. Um, if you want to prevent like flickering, when you scroll down and scroll up with, with your alignment and your layout, um, let me actually show it to you. You need to use um, the these uh, viewport, how are these, VH and VW instead of percentages. If we record this, I made it a little bit responsive with a like a media query. So we have a, a max width. This is like in the range of most of the most of the smartphones, almost all of them, I think. And then we just decrease the font size of the headings and the text. So we got it right here. If I scroll down, you see there is no. It looks smooth. It looks very smooth and it's not lagging. So if we scroll down, we see, we see it exactly the same actually. And it's, it's smooth, it works, it's responsive. So yeah, that's like what's really cool about this library, basic scroll is that it works on all devices. There was not like a tutorial for beginners who are just starting out. So I do recommend you to first have some experience in HTML, the CSS JavaScript, so that you're you're able to catch up. You can check this out on my code pen, it's codepen.io slash powit. You'll see my dashboard and you'll you'll be able to view the source code, do everything you want with it. You can fork this, work on it as well. And that's I think basically it. Oh, there is one more thing I need to say. You see this like transition here of like 1.0 seconds. Now, why is this basically to make it look a little bit smoother? So when you're scrolling and you stop, it, it will kind of make that look smooth. That's exactly what this transition does. Then we also use will change, by the way, and then two, two properties or whichever property you're animating it's kind of to hint the browser what will change so that it can optimize it so that was it for today guys i just changed my haircut if you want to know how to do that be sure to subscribe i hope you had uh, had still some fun and uh, you you learned something i hope you're looking forward to everything else that's coming uh on this on this youtube channel you know what to do if you want to keep up with updates on uh, on some of my projects or on whatever I'm up to, uh, feel free to follow me on my Instagram account. Uh, everything you need is going to be in the description below. I just want to say, guys, uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend or whenever you're watching this. Enjoy your time, uh, have fun, keep yourself busy with useful stuff. Don't watch too much Netflix and uh, go for it. See you.